So, Barry. Yes. What do we think? Oh, um... That is the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be. Um, well, yeah, I can't pretend that I'm a big fan of the writing, the story, or the characters, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> which isn't a, which isn't a particularly strong start. I, I know, but um, but the typeface is wonderful. The that? typeface is wonderful. <laughs> and the layout. Ah, oh, if you can see, I've got a copy of the page in front of me. It's lo- glorious. Um, no, it's, it's not one of the strongest stories we've covered, but um, I, I think it may have some saving graces, which I'll, I'll maybe sort of allude to later on. Um, can I just tell you, that I, I, when we read this initially, there was no name attached to this and led to a bit of speculation about the, the author. But I can tell you that there's a, somebody called Rachel Munro who has their name at the bottom of this, uh, of this particular story. Now, I don't know if that's a pseudonym. Um, it could that could be a, a he or she. It could be anybody, frankly. It's not a name that's known to me. But uh, so this possibly was written by um, a female writer, which I am I was quite surprised at. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised about that as well. Why is that? Uh, I thought it might have been written by someone who had been turned down <laughs> by a lady, and it was kind of a cautionary tale. <laughs> You can feel the sting of a jilted lover. <laughs> yeah. I do think it's just people behave in this way and the kind of moralistic tone. It's not the kind of thing you would choose to read nowadays. And I think it was maybe just more accepted as a style of writing then, or maybe even the kind of preachy nature of it was something that they looked for in some of their, their stories at that time. You're being very measured, Judy. It won't last. 